Peter Harrison, father and trainer of Scott Harrison and manager Frank Maloney alongside Scott as he makes his way to the ring for his 10th world title fight. He's won seven of the nine so far, lost to Manuel Medina, a draw against Victor Polo at the beginning of the year, but he came back brilliantly in summer, stopping Michael Brody in Manchester and now aiming to keep the title once again. He's a man who his father, Peter, says you would want in the trenches alongside you. In other words, he is absolutely Absolutely as brave as they come and Harrison at the age of 28 here tonight in his 29th professional fight he will have rehydrated he'll be strong he'll be determined and he will want to keep that prize WBO belt ladies and gentlemen could you please be upstanding for both of the national anthems please pay due respect for the national anthem of Australia. As we invite to give his unique interpretation of the flower of Scotland, the wonderfully talented young man from the Buclivy Symphony Orchestra, Mr. Davy Haggerton. Come on, Greyheads, let's give us a hand here. Oh, flower of Scotland, when will we see you like again? The fort and tide fall, your wee bit held and clang and stood against me. For it was on me and sent him home to drink again. And in the past we must remain For we can still rise now And be a nation again And stir again Put it was on me And sent him home To think again Good luck, Scott. Ladies and gentlemen, the unique vocal talents of Davy Haggerty. Once again, ladies and gentlemen, good evening and welcome to the Brayhead Arena here in this fabulous city of Glasgow, Scotland. Tonight, Frank Warren's Sports Network in association with the news of the world, Big on Boxing and on the internet with www.frankwarren.tv proudly present 12 three-minute rounds of boxing for the WBO Featherweight Championship of the World. Welcome to you, the viewers, watching live and exclusive on ITV4. The officials have been appointed by the World Boxing Organization and the British Boxing Board of Control. Chairman for the board, Mr. Charles Giles. WBO supervisor is Mr. Richard DeCure. British Boxing Board of Control steward in charge, Bernard Connolly. Timekeeper at the bell, Mr. Ricky Gilmore. The three scoring judges at ringside are Roy Francis from England, Manuel Oliver Palomo from Spain, and Andre van Drudenbruer from Belgium. Finally, when the action commences, the star referee in charge of the action, taking part in his 125th world title contest. A warm Scottish welcome, please, for Mr. Paul Thomas from Derby. And so, people of Glasgow, Scotland, and viewers watching on ITV4 from the Brayhead Arena, this is the big Introducing to you, firstly, the challenger, boxing out of the red corner, wearing the black colored shorts trimmed with red. At the weigh-in yesterday, he scaled eight stones, 13 and a half pounds. He has an outstanding record, consisting of 41 contests, 39 wins, 25 
of those wins coming by a way of knockout with only two defeats. Presenting from Sydney, Australia, Nadal Skinny Hussain. And opposing him, boxing out of the blue corner, wearing the solid black shorts trimmed with gold. At the weigh-in yesterday, he scaled on the championship limit of nine stones exactly. He also has an excellent record. Reading this evening, 28 contests, 24 wins. 14 of those wins coming by way of knockout. Only two defeats and two draws. Tonight, making the sixth defense of his championship, presenting the two-time WBO featherweight champion. Mr. Paul Thomas with his final instructions. 12 rounds. Okay, fellas, we've gone through everything. Let me just tell you what I... I'll just go over some of the second time. Keep your shots in the target area. Nothing around the back, nothing in the kidneys. And very importantly, remember to defend yourselves at all times, unless you hear me shout, stop boxing. Okay? Best of luck to both of you. You see the two men head to head, Nidal Hussain, slightly the taller, at around about five foot nine. Scott Harrison with those piercing blue eyes, fixing Hussain with the most hurtful of stares as they stood nose to nose. Hussain can bang, he can punch, the left hook's the danger shot. Harrison, in so many of his fights, has just tried to walk through his opponents. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. Hussain is a man who, we reckon, is somebody who certainly commands respect. He can box a bit, and he can certainly fire in hurtful shots, particularly with that left hand. Harrison sometimes has tended to negate the opportunity to box his way into fights and instead has just bludgeoned his way through and straight away a few words for the Hussein corner brother Billy who's acting as trainer he's joint trainer actually with Jeff Fennick the Australian legend Fennick though hasn't made the trip he's preparing another of his fighters for a big contest and a good start from Harrison and he's landed some good hurtful shots in that opening exchange there yeah, Harrison's got the starting blocks nice and fast. Hussein's got a very sort a very slightly subdued look about him. You know, I don't know really obviously he's just he's just having a look at Harrison just to see what he's got. Harrison's just gonna be a little bit cautious. However, he's done exactly the right thing and he's he's found lots of shots. Hussein didn't really get out of the starting blocks against Oscar Larios last year, but blamed weight making difficulties for that one. Fighting at the lighter super bantamweight limit but Harrison is going looking for him from the word go here and he's finding the target and he's not finding Hussein particularly elusive Hussein 27 years old actually a year younger than Harrison has had more fights more professional fights and no stranger to these shores beat Brian Carr back on points back in 2000 to win the Commonwealth title and came over here and ended the career of Delroy Price so he knows all about fighting out of Britain, but Harrison has started well. Good body shots. Well, this boy is saying his style is totally made for, for Harrison. You know, he's, he's not a clever counter-punching boxer. He's flat-footed. He's a puncher like Harrison. So this, this is going to warm up and develop into quite an exciting encounter. Good uppercut from Hussein. That's his best punch of the fight so far. There's a good sneak right uppercut inside. And he gets a little bit untidy. And Paul Thomas is going to have to have a word with them. Come on, boys. Let's tidy this one up. And uh, Harrison, I think, was a little bit on the receiving end there and showed that he is not prepared to be messed about by Hussein. Hussein's got a nice high guard, so Harrison's going to have to break it down. It's not very often you see Scott Harrison, Scott Harrison out jabbing anybody, but he's doing a good job tonight. Well, he started well. Hussein is not a particularly fleet-footed sort of individual, is he? It's been Manuel Medina who, who inflicted that defeat, which cost him his title a couple of years ago, subsequently reversed. And then at the beginning of the year, there was the draw against Victor Polo. Some people felt Harrison was a bit lucky there. And a good right hand there from Harrison. And Hussein momentarily wanted to hold on. And Harrison, for me, has emphatically taken the opening round. 
Yeah, Harrison's been nice and aggressive. Harrison started well, but he's already oh, marking up a little up. bit after one round, and there was a good old-fashioned exchange, and Harrison was piling on the pressure. Referee Paul Thomas had to intervene at one stage and tell him to tidy up the work, but Harrison certainly winning the opening round, Duke. Yeah, he certainly won the opening round, but he knows he's in a fight. You know, Hussein's been told to, to work the body. He's got a trademark left hook, come up a cut, he throws to the body, so we have to look out from that. Harrison has been hurt from body shots before in previous fights. Hussein looking to bring up the uppercuts as well, that's a clear... A clear tactic which he's trying to bring in. He's trying to work Harrison through the middle. Harrison so often has tended to get a little bit hook happy in his recent fights. Good shot though that from Harrison. Hussein has been sparring in his preparations in Las Vegas with Steve Forbes, whose style mimics, well certainly to a degree, that of Harrison. Harrison just giving Hussein a little bit too much room there, just to just to, just to push up with that jab. He needs to flick his jab because okay, it might not be the best in the world, but he used to use it as a nuisance value to work his way in behind the right hand. Scott Harrison's been a featherweight duke now since he was 15 years old, and my, my one continuing worry about him is that he does have to battle so hard to make the nine stone limit. He's obviously rehydrated and will be a lot stronger than he was at yesterday's weigh-in. But surely, surely those punishing training regimes will ultimately take their toll and he'll one day go to the well and find that it's dry. Absolutely, he must be the biggest featherweight I've seen in my life. For nine stone, you know, I mean, we know he boils down from something like 11 stone to make the nine stone limit. Oh, good right hand from Hussein and Harrison felt that one. He certainly did, just walked straight onto it as, as I was making like that point about the making the weight. But he fights back every time, he's a real gritty, doggy champion. Now, nobody can nobody could ever question the fighting heart of Scott Harrison. Another uppercut inside from Hussein as Harrison comes in, flowing flurries of punches, but there are warning signs here. He's been picked off a couple of times in this round. Maybe the aggression is doing enough for Harrison, but Hussein has thrown some quality punches and another one. Turned the right hand beautifully and caught Harrison as he came in, trying to throw that left hook. Oh, and there's Harrison uh, Hussein with a little bit of showboating, saying, well, if that's all you've got, I've got nothing to worry about. And Hussein is starting to grow in confidence. Good body shot. Yeah, there is a, a definite air of, of uh, confidence with Hussein's work. You know, he's dropping his hands, his, particularly his left hand, very, very low, which will tell you just how confident he is. Now, Harrison's trying to make this fight ugly. He's trying to maul him and muscle him, which is what he's got to do. He's got to take this boy right out of his stride. There are warning signs in this second round that it might not be the easy fight that some people have suspected, and Hussein is finishing the second round strongly. Harrison has been the aggressor, but quality shots coming in from Hussein. From the creator of Lethal Weapon, oh Robert Downey Jr. That Harrison with a smear of grease over that left eye, but he's got a cut up around the hairline, the scalp over his right eye, but there were some really solid shots coming from Hussein in that round. Warning signs, Duke. Absolutely. You know, Harrison's just presenting too much of a target for Hussein. He just allowed him to tee off there. OK, this is a boxing match and you're going to expect to get hit, but I'd just like to see just a little bit of lateral movement from Harrison. You know, he likes to just walk in in a straight line and come out in exactly the same way, and that's playing into Hussein's hand. Harrison struggled desperately, I reckon, to make the weights yesterday. And uh, he, we are told, weighed 10 stone 6 as he came in, and Harrison beckoning Hussein forward, saying, come on, let's make this one a tear-up. I'm ready for you. If you want to mix it, I'm there for you, boy. Another hurtful body shot by Hussein. I mean, Harrison's he's doing the right thing, he's trying to close him down, but obviously there's a price to pay every time he takes that step in. There are occasions when Harrison's looked a little bit susceptible to the body attacks in the past. Victor Polo caught him with one or two, Medina certainly did. And of course, if he has struggled, and warnings from the referee about the head clashes, and that's the second time that Paul Thomas has asked them to tidy it up. 
But if Harrison is tight at the weight, and we know he is, then the body shot clearly is a tactic. It certainly is, and, you know, that's not a good sign that Harrison's actually complaining to the referee about a low blow or an infringement with the head from his same. Go forward, Skinny, they implore Hussein from the Australian's corner, a few feet away from us, and Hussein just caught by a left hand, but a terrific uppercut inside from Hussein, and Harrison momentarily there wants to hold on. Great right uppercut, Duke. Yeah, he's got to hold on, that, that shot went right through the guard. Hussein's really fancies this shot, but coming back Harrison now with his fighting heart and spirit. Well, Hussein is kidding and trying to get Harrison to come in. He's feigning tiredness, and he's not tired. Hussein clearly fancies this one and fancies it a great deal. Is this going to be an upset? Third round. And Hussein is, from body language, looking like the controlling influence in that ring at the moment. Yeah, but can he keep it up? That's the thing. I mean, Harrison again complained he's not that happy in there, but he's still winning the round. That's a oh. better shot. Decent shot, it had a sort of a round arm look to it though, and Hussein coming back, firing in heavy shots of his own. Now, is Harrison doing enough to edge this one with the judges? I wonder. The hurtful punches have come from Hussein, and Hussein's doing little things now which would suggest he's, he's counter punching Harrison with good effect. Hussein catches a right hand as he drops his gloves low. It's a close round, this one, Duke. Yeah, there's not a lot in it. Whoever lands the telling punches over these closing seconds will nick the round on my card. A little bit untidy. The way Harrison fights, it's always likely to be tough. Toshiba Cosmio F20. You're the man, you're the world champion here. Great. Good. Well, that was a terrific uppercut from Hussein, and Harrison felt that one down to his boots. He's cut now slightly across the bridge of his nose. Harrison is once more in a tough fight. He seems to have been in an awful lot of them in his reign over two periods as world featherweight champion. Good right hand from Harrison. And the crowd implore, imploring him to come forward. And his corner man, his father, was saying, be the boss in there, bully him, work him. He has to do exactly that because if he gives his boy too much range and distance, he gets picked off. So Hussein is trying to, you know, get through the rounds, obviously get Harrison into the later rounds where it can be more effective. He's hoping that the pace will slow. However, Harrison's on to his game plan and has upped his ante. All those weeks training in Fort William, as you saw before the fight began. Training with that 50 pound weight on his back that develops endurance for Harrison, but he's got problems about more than just fitness in there. This fella can box and he can punch. The same, born in Lebanon, now fighting out of Sydney. Right hand from Harrison, landed pretty well flush, but Hussein took it well. Not a particularly hard fought pace. This pace will suit the challenger more than the champion. Well, Harrison allowing his work rate to drop a little in this round, in this fourth round. Well, Hussein's come all the way from, 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 from Australia, he's come far, far away, you know, his, his body clock wouldn't have adjusted fully in a nine-day period. However, so Harrison really needs to push him and push him hard, break down his defences. Some good Australian featherweights in the past. Jeff Fennick, of course, notable among them, but going further back, those fans with longer memories will remember Johnny Famisham back in 1969, winning the world title in London. Is Hussein about to become another one? Harrison and his army of fans here at the Brayhead Arena will hope very much that that is not about to become the case. Harrison trying to jab his way in. And Frank Maloney, his manager, grumbling to the referee about use of Hussein's head and how he ducked low and lifted Harrison up under his under his outstretched arm. 
Harrison just needs to step in just a little bit closer where he can land these kind of punches. Good That's body shots, work. though, Stu. Two That's good body good. shots and a good solid right hand as well. And Hussein was hurt a little by those. He wanted to hold on. Harrison must have heard what I said. As I said that, he took that step in and then some good punches, hurtful punches. This is better from Harrison. Oh, a good left hook. And Hussein staggered by that one, sweeping left hook. And now Hussein has to dig deep himself. He needs to cover up and work his way through to the bell to end this fourth round. Big one for Harrison. How are you going to help? What's this? It's on your set top. A little bit of an air of panic in the Hussein corner, and well, there might have been. It all started by that sweeping left hook, and the attack continued after that. Yeah, he went out in a straight line. Harrison Corbin with a lovely, as you said, sweeping left hook. Well, Harrison, after a rocky third round, has got a, a rocky second round rather, has got right back on his game now, and that was a big fourth. And it looks to me as though it's body shots which are beginning to break up Nidal Hussein. The Australian now has got to find the resolve to rally from this position as Harrison will come on strong again. He's trying to just walk straight through him now and develop a sustained attack. But what Harrison's going to be very careful of is that he doesn't punch himself out. You know, he's through plenty of shots in that little combination that he threw. But, you know, Hussein might just be trying to let him to punch himself out and then start his attack. Was supposed to have uh, defended his title last month, Scott Harrison. Four extra weeks of training because of a, a ligament injury to his right arm maybe has helped him develop a greater fitness than he would otherwise have had. Certainly that's what his manager, Frank Maloney, would have us believe. Both boxers landing hurtful jabs there. Hussein allowing himself to be pushed back and his corner, his brother, Billy, was frantically telling him you've got to try and put Harrison onto the back foot well, many a man has found that it is not an easy thing to do because Harrison for a featherweight if nothing else is tremendously physically strong and look at the size of his torso look at the size of his chest for a, for a featherweight he is a big man he certainly is but he's boxing with real urgency now as Harrison really trying to push and force the pace of this fight Hussein has not been able to deliver the body punches over the last couple of rounds that he was doing earlier in the fight. And Harrison will not take a backward step. Yeah, Hussein's work rate has definitely dropped off. So, you know, that will suit the champion. That will give Harrison the time he needs to get into punching range and to land them big right hands. 12 rounds, the championship limits in the closing stages of the fifth. Oh, and down goes Hussein. He's angry with himself, caught by a right hand, and he doesn't look as though he fancies too much more of this. He's up on his feet, he's telling Paul Thomas that he's OK, that he can continue, but now can Scott Harrison finish his man off? Hussein said that Harrison is not a big puncher. Well, we'll see now. Couple Harrison has to take off the ropes. That was a strange knockdown because Harrison just sort of running behind straight punches in a straight line, caught the boy flush, and he just went down. Well, Harrison has maybe just punched himself out a little bit with that attack, and he's having to bide his time. I think Hussein's going to see it through to the bell, and he does. But that is a big round to Scott Harrison. That will be 10 8. And for a moment, it looked as though Hussein was not going to get up. Let's get into the corner and find just what's happening. Your legs got tangled up. Skinny, please understand me now. They're saying his legs got tangled up. Well, was that was that more of a slip than a punch? Now look at it again. He lands with the right hand. Watch the right hand come through now. And Harrison went in there trying to really take him out after that. He had to take a couple as he did so but that was a big round for the champion. Let's have another close look at the knockdown. He does a double jab and a right misses with that. It's actually a jab that puts him down, it's a straight left, just clips him. Yeah, maybe, maybe he was off balance in the first place. Certainly they think that he just fell over his own feet. Nevertheless, though, it's going to score 10-8, and that puts Harrison way in front in this fight now. 
So into the sixth. And I've only given Nadal Hussain one round so far, the second. Would you agree with that, Duke? Well, I've actually given him just a share of the third round. Well, Harrison is going looking for him again. He's head-shotting a bit, pot-shotting at the head of uh, Hussain. Yeah, Harrison's just got to jump straight on him. You know, if that was a legitimate knockdown, which I believe it was, you know, that, that 60 seconds may have not been enough for Hussein to recover. Just got to get straight on him now. Scott Harrison in the sixth round. Looks as though he's on course to retaining his WBO title now. But Hussein is a banger. Right hand again from Harrison, just a moment, momentarily. Looks as though it stunned Hussein and got a little bit of a response from the Harrison corner. Watching intently his father Peter, who's been alongside him throughout his career, a good fighter in his own right years ago. Yeah, these are good jabs from Hussein. He's, Harrison just giving him too much room. He's to close him down quicker. Nullify that jab. Well, he put in a terrific effort in the fifth round, and he's just, I think, perhaps just taking a little bit of a breather in the opening stages of the sixth, and no surprise that he's not quite been able to maintain the intensity of the action in the fifth. Cheers from the crowd as Harrison tries to unload and Hussein ducks low, but I thought he slipped inside those there. I think the, the bulk of the applause came from the bleachers. Good body shots from Harrison. These are hurtful shots. Uh, Hussein came back well himself, though, and threw a couple of good hooks off the ropes. Uh, Hussein's not winning these rounds, though. Oh, well, that's a good right hand in there. There was a right hook to the body and a right hand from Hussein, and Harrison had to take the headshot. Again, Paul Thomas says, clean up the action. Well, no, we've got a lot of complaining from Harrison, not really that happy. This is very much the spiritual home of Scott Harrison. Nine of his ten championship fights have been here. Hussein trying to kid Harrison in, dropping his gloves low. Harrison, too much of an old pro to be suckered in by that one. Well, Hussein's not winning the round, you know, he can, he can show by all he wants, but he's not winning the round. Well, up on his toes and trying to show a fleet-footed approach, but he's not actually doing a great deal, is he? No, he's just trying to look busy doing nothing, and it's not gonna, that's not going to catch the judge's eyes. If he's going to do that, he's got to be able to back it up. And we reach the midway stage with Harrison winning the fight. Toshiba Cosmio F2136 with Intel Centrino Mobile Tech. Has Harrison gone through the storm? He had some problems earlier in the fight, but we've got him well in control, Duke. You've got him six points ahead. Absolutely, you know, there was a 10-8 round, obviously, with the knockdown. He's, he's won everything in my book, you know, we've got one round as a draw. But Hussein is still in there, and he is a man who has got 25 stoppage victories in his 39 wins, a couple from Harrison straying low. Referee allowing him to get away with it, but he can punch Hussein. Harrison, though, only down once in his entire professional career, and that's quite a while ago as well. Went down against the Garnet and Smith of Doom. That's good work from the champion, it really is. Treble jab, right hand, left hook, good combination. Hussein trying to vary his attack, trying to command the respect of Harrison. It's really not happening, is it? No, he looks a little bit lethargic now, where he's being ground down. You know, and as he drops his hands and starts bouncing around on his toes, that's going to play into the champion's hands, because as the rounds progress, the legs get more tired, the pace drops even more so, so the champion can grind him down even more. You know, Harrison's got this guy's number as we speak. and just picked off by a little right hand as he came in close. Hussein trying to kind of show that he's a mover, getting up on his toes, but in fact, a lot of that motion is just bouncing up and down on the spot. There's not a huge amount of lateral movement, and that's where Harrison's had problems in the past. You get a sneaky sort of rangy fighter like Manuel Medina, that's when the trouble's in, and Hussein isn't doing that. 
No, he certainly isn't. He's just standing in front of Harrison now. And he's not going to win any prizes for being the stronger of the two. Interesting to hear what the corners, what the two corners have to say at the end of this round. Lovely left hook to the body there from Harris, Harrison. Have you noticed that there's a, a definite drop in the pace of the fight now from both boxers? Seventh round, and Harrison trying to remain the aggressor. The work rate from both men, as Duke rightly says, is starting to flag, starting to slow. Duke McKenzie, who I sought to remind you, is a world champion himself at three weights. As indeed, I think, it was Jeff Fennick, who's a co-trainer of Nadal Hussain. He certainly was. Well, seventh round nearing its conclusion, and it's been a scrappy sort of round. Yeah, both boxes look very tired indeed. Subdued sort of crowd at the end of that seventh round. Let's eavesdrop in the corner and find out what's happening there. The guys playing for time, exactly what the Duke and I were saying there. Dan, get plants and move! Or oh, hold him! That's right, Dan, come up when you say down. Dan, come up, that's when he's hooking you. Stay low. Skinny. Let's not let him back you up the first half. Minute. Again, the jab's jab. got to go he's first. Every time you use the jab, oh, he doesn't have no idea. Jab. Back him up, champ. Come on. Excellent. Back him up, champ, is the advice. Well, if he is going to be a champ, a world champ, that is, he's going to have to do something pretty sensational in the rounds remaining in this contest. Well, he has the power to do something sensational. It's whether or not Harrison will allow him to do that to do that. Harrison looks pretty much in control to me, Duke. Unless he unless he gets careless. Yeah, he's, he's bossing the fight. Every now and again, obviously, he takes a shot. And what you're seeing here from Hussein is he's, this could be his last hurrah, his last ditched effort to unravel the champion, to see if he can make him come apart at the seams. Well, it suggest whether it was a, a word of disparaging bravado or not, but he did suggest that if he couldn't find the way to beat Harrison, who he said he didn't really rate, then he quit the sport. Harrison took that as an indication that he wasn't too confident. Well, you know, when boxers start talking about retiring when they're going into a world championship fight, it's not a good sign. So, you know, Harrison does have the tools to break these boys' spirit and grind him down to an emphatic points victory, if not a late stoppage. Good right hand from Harrison. The same, not really doing too much of note now. Now he's, he's, he's looking for that, for that, for that bingo punch. I don't think Harrison is going to be so stupid as to allow himself to get suckered in. Complaints from. Hussein about use of the head from Harrison. Paul Thomas was having none of it. Perhaps rightly drawing the impression that it was six of one and half a dozen of the other. Well, it is a better round for the challenger. Yeah, he's just starting to bully his way into it a little bit. He's trying to flail away at the body of Harrison. Clearly the tactic. Harrison mustn't lose concentration. He's just got to keep this boy, just keep him backed up because he's allowing himself to be backed up. Well, if the judges are reading this the same way as we are, Duke, Harrison is a street ahead. And really all he's got to do is just box his way through the, the remainder of the fight. That's good work from Harrison.
closing seconds of the eighth. Pace of the fight has dropped quite alarmingly yet again. It has indeed. Well, back they go to the corner. And uh, it wasn't the most engaging of rounds, that one, the eighth. Harrison, the way I'm looking at it, has got to be bossing this fight. Let's have a word with Barry McGuigan. Barry, how do you read it? I have Harrison four rounds ahead. Hussein came back into the fight there, but that could be his last-ditch effort. He's blowing hard, and Harrison is not good backing up. He shouldn't be backing up. He should be trying to bully the champion, keep him under pressure, and just force him back. And he's just got to grind this guy down. There's nothing subtle about what Scott does. It just has to be wear and tear him down, work the jab. And uh, Hossein is using good lateral movement when Harrison's throwing the right hand. But he's, he's moving well. He's got to just step up another gear now, Harrison, put the pressure on. And not do anything stupid. Just don't, for goodness sake, at this stage, having fought well early on, don't get caught. Absolutely. He's, you know, he's a mile ahead. You know, I've got Harrison winning pretty much everything. I've got a couple of rounds even. Then obviously we've got the 10-8 knockdown round, but everything else is in Harrison's favour. Peter Harrison giving an observation to Paul Thomas that there was no shout of seconds out, I suspect, and uh, didn't much appreciate being fumbled out of the ring and being told to get out. Here we go, though. Harrison starting fast in the ninth round. You know, my worry for Harrison is that you know he goes in in a straight line and he comes out in a straight line. So if, if Hussein starts to give him more lateral movement and comes in at different angles, he's going to start to find some success. My worry for Harrison is that if he was dead at the weight and if he has really struggled, then this is now the area where he's going to start to feel it. This is the last four rounds and this is now the time if he's struggling when he will show those signs. Good right hook though, as I said that. Yeah, certainly you would you would you would feel that, but um, you know Hussein hasn't showed anything to this point. He's that he can fight at pace. No, he is a bit he is a bit one paced as a fighter, isn't he? Absolutely, one paced and one dimensional. Hussein's corner right in front of us, imploring their man to jab his way in, which he duly does. But having landed the jab, there's nothing following up. They feel that Harrison's work rate is dropping and that he's providing a more static target now. Well, you know, both the boxes' work rate is dropping, but Harrison's still winning these rounds. And Hussein doesn't appear to be able to, to up, his, up his work rate. So, you know, Harrison's still going to be just on top. Good uppercut inside, though, from Hussein, as you said, that Duke. And momentarily, Harrison wanted to just hold on. Oh, good shot from Harrison, though. Responded it with, in, responded with interest. And another right hand as well. And this is good work once more from Harrison, who senses the tiredness of his opponent. Harrison just needs to shorten his punches on the inside. You know, he's coming through with hooks and uppercuts, but they're too long and missing the target. Hussein himself is also looking desperately tired as Harrison backed off from that attack, realising that his man just wasn't there to be taken. Harrison mustn't get suckered in because this boy is desperate now. You know, he knows he's a mile behind and he can only throw single punches at any given time, so Harrison's a mile ahead, mustn't get sloppy. Hussein once again complaining to referee Paul Thomas about Harrison subdued sort of crowd here it's absolutely packed to the rafters is the Brayhead arena first time it's been full in my memory I think since Wayne McCullough was here a couple of years ago and that was one of Scott Harrison's best performances this has not been vintage Harrison but he's still ahead must be winning this fight surely he certainly is as, as it, I, I give that round to him yet again should you be in there any team you're very comfortable you're all comfortable Here's some of the action from that ninth round. Harrison, oh, good uppercut that was. He'd taken one himself, but it rocked back the head of, uh, of Hussein and continued working away impressively on the ropes. Yeah, this was Harrison's best attack throughout the round. Just kept him pinned against the ropes. They all look nice and calm and cool and collected in that corner, don't they? 
Not too many signs of worry. Their boy's not in any trouble. He's a mile ahead. He's not taking anything uh, too bad. He's not taking any, any punishment. Hardly whatsoever. They're looking worried there. They know this fight is slipping away. Nadal Hussein, who was challenged for a world title before last year against Oscar Larios, found that it was too much there. Froze a little in that contest. It was on the undercard of the Barrera Morales fight. Didn't do himself justice. And here again tonight, I, sus I suspect that he will come out of this at the end of the contest if he sees it to the distance, feeling that he could and should have offered more than he has. Good uppercut, though. Yeah, it was a good uppercut from Hussein there. Harrison needs to shorten his punches, as I said earlier, on the inside. He's trying a lot, a little cluster of punches, but they're not short enough. He's got to just pull the punches closer to his chest as he brings the uppercut to him and just bring the elbow around with the hooks. Hussein trying to box his way in. And Harrison is being picked off. Harrison... Flagging again is the is the pace slowing once more from the champion. Long way in front on our cards, remember. But this is where a bit of imagination of Scott Harrison would come into play. If you can show the boy a jab and then step across, come back to a right hand, left hook, just create a different angle. He's going in, in the straight line and meeting him exactly right at that point. Oh, good right hand from Harrison. He's landed a couple in this round. Hussein's taken them well to give him credit. And he's trying to plant his feet and dig in that left hook. See, Harrison could almost go on the counter punching mode and still win the fight. He doesn't have to force the fight because he's, you know, he's a mile ahead. Doesn't have to walk onto silly punches like that. Straightforward for Harrison this one, pretty much. It's not been one of his hardest nights. Had one or two rocky moments early on, but Harrison has really bossed most of this one, at least to my way of looking at it. Yeah, the rounds have become quite repetitious now. You know, with Harrison, he starts fast, dies a little bit in the middle, and then just tries to pick up the pace towards the end of the round. And Hussein is just constantly on the receiving end. His corner man is suggesting he's had his had a few moments of his own. Well, Harrison right turned. Hand, right hand from Hussein did it, and the left hook into the body. And Harrison wants to hold on all of a sudden. He was caught by a right hand, and I don't think he saw it coming. And that was what stunned him. Harrison, just a moment stop lapse of concentration could have cost him dearly. He muttered to himself, "Come on!" as he went in, and I think he's ridden out the storm, or has he? Hussein, right there in his face, will surely have instantly sensed that he stunned his man. Certainly the corner realised that. Well, this would be... If, if Hussein could pull this off, it would be like the great escape. Well, it almost looked like a nothing punch, didn't it? And Harrison goes back to his corner, shaking his head, and he's angry with himself to have got caught by that one. The punch looked like nothing, but he didn't see it coming, and he was wobbled, no question. You're punching Scott. Why don't you just punch it through his centre? Okay. He's got a hodge, he's got to do that. I told you, people want to get held in the line. Well, the left hook into the body as well. And Harrison, for a moment there, was in very dodgy territory. I mean, you're one in the feet. Okay. Not right. Scott Harrison. run. Hold your ground and move. Give distance and punch. Don't run. Don't run. Skinny. If you're going to throw one, two, the last yeah, one. Fred, throw it with the together. third one. No, you're not, you're not forgetting it. your position. You're not skinny. Hey, if we're going to dip from here, the right up one. Oh, right 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 well, you've got it by six there, Duke. I've got it a little bit closer than that one. Well, you know, Hussein's not doing enough. You know, I would give him that last round because he's got a good shot, telling punch. But, you know, Harrison's just winning everything out of sight. You know, the pace suits him, obviously. Neither boxer can sustain a hard fought pace. But what we're going to see now, I think, from Hussein is a big effort because he knows he can get through. They're telling him between rounds he's tired. Get in there, back him up, and force the fight. Well, perhaps Harrison is tired, and we're about to find out just how tired. Harrison is a brave, proud champion. He's shown that 
repeatedly over the last three years since he won the title from Julio Pablo Chacon. He's had his terrific nights, he's had nights when he's looked a little bit indifferent, and here he has done enough, but he doesn't want to get caught again like he did in the 10th, and he has been, has been stung again by that little chopping left hook, and suddenly the Australian corner looking very agitated again as they sense a weakness in the champion. Well, Harrison just allowing himself just to be hit just a little bit too cleanly, you know, he's put a hell of a lot of work into these rounds and it's brought this boy back to life almost. He's gulping in the air, Duke, is Scott Harrison. He's feeling it and he's starting to be caught. Another good left hand from Hussein. I mean, it's, it's no wonder Hussein's got this sort of energy left. He's done absolutely nothing for several of the rounds previously and now all of a sudden he can see the finish line, so he's sprung to life. Champion's just got to keep his chin tucked right down into his chest. Pop away at his jab until he can clear his head and get himself back into a commanding lead. Well, Hussein is winning this 11th round, but Harrison is hanging on in there. He's having to dig deep, show his fighting heart. And Hussein just needs to find more urgency if he's going to finish Harrison. And Harrison again is tagged by the right hand and once more wants to hold on. He certainly does, you know, and there are bigger challenges out there for Scott Harrison, but he needs to secure a victory and not throw away a landslide points. Oh, what oh. a big shot there, hurt with the right hand, Harrison. And the uppercut, oh no! Harrison again is in dangerous territory, the legs stiffened by those two left hands. Back goes Hussein, was that showboating or was he genuinely caught? And Hussein is trying to finish Harrison. Harrison senses that he too could stop the Australian challenger. And dramatic moments in the last 11 round, in the last minutes, last seconds of the 11th round, as the referee momentarily looked as though he lost control of that exchange. And here comes the bell to end the 11th. And a dramatic round it has been as well. Well. Harrison has been rocked, stunned badly in that 11th round. Big round for Hussein, but Harrison's still ahead on the cards. Hussein catching Harrison with that left uppercut, followed by the left hook. Oh, and he was really wobbled there. He felt those absolutely down to his ankles. Absolutely, he was all over the place just momentarily. The punches were stopped right flush on the chin from Hussein. Fortunately for Hussein, he's not a good punch picker and wasn't able to finish him off. Rip, left hook, find the rip, find the rip. Stay low and let your hands go. We don't want to get knocked down, skinny. Be smart. Please, get, oh, get a knock down, skinny. Don't punch together. Get a knock down. Have they get hit for nothing, skinny. Get a knock down. Last round. The two fighters being urged to touch gloves by Paul Thomas. They do so. Three minutes now. Will Harrison be able to box his way through to retain his title? Well, all Harrison's it goes to... the distance, of course. It goes to the judges' scorecards. Yeah, all Harrison has to do is to stay on his feet to secure the victory. Mile ahead on points. Shouldn't do anything crazy. Doesn't have to get involved. And a real punch up with this kid. Paul Thomas saying to Harrison, once I've said break, let's not have a hit off the break, which is what happened. Harrison saying that Hussein was right in his face. What else could I do? Because he didn't stop punching. Good shot from Harrison. Has that been the telling blow which has established his dominance once again? It's Hussein who backs off now quite voluntarily, but he's made Harrison miss with quite a lot of those punches. And there's nothing more tiring than hitting thin air this late in the fight. Harrison, two minutes away from retaining his title. At least that's what we believe. The both boxers really, really tired now, desperately tired. It's been a tough fight, by no means a classic fight. Ebbed and flowed. Hussein has finished strongly, but Harrison showing that champion's resolve now. 
is coming forward bravely and trying to catch the judge's eye and made absolutely certain that this belt is going to remain his property once more in his 10th world title contest but he ships another good right hand from Hussein yeah, nothing but desperation now coming from Hussein I don't think he's got enough left in the tank now to, to, to score the knockout which he so desperately needs he's got time but I don't think he's going to be able to do it Harrison was caught by a solid straight left though and the up attempted right uppercut that followed just whistled past his nose if that had landed on the button who knows thankfully mercifully for the Scottish supporters here in Glasgow it missed and Harrison holds on well, Harrison's playing into the, challenge, the challenger's hands now by going looking for him with 45 seconds left on the clock. You know, should take a backward step and just use the perimeter of the ring, get through the fight. He's won a landslide points to decision. We will see. Hussein needs to find the knockout blow if he's going to stop Harrison now, and we think that that is the only way in which he's going to seize this title from the Scottish champion. Harrison trying to get in close, trying to not give the space for Hussein to tee off with anything purposeful. Left hook in there, and Harrison had to walk through it. Now, just for the last few seconds of this fight, trying to bully Hussein around the ring. Has it been enough? We will see in a moment or two's time. This is going to go to the referee's scorecards. The Scottish crowd stands and applauds, and Scott Harrison believes he's won it. Hussein's people are celebrating as well. I've got this one a little bit closer than Duke McKenzie. Boos of the crowd as Hussein is hoisted onto the shoulders of his cornermen and the cheers of the crowd as Harrison parades around all four corners and waving to them. I've got it right around about three points in Harrison's favour. I know you've got it by a little bit more, Duke, but that was a tough night's work for Scott Harrison. He's had to dig deep. He certainly has had to dig really, really deep. He's posing for the cameras. He certainly thinks he's won it. And Frank Maloney, his manager, who's been alongside him throughout his career as well, I've been a seasoned Maloney watcher for many a year through the Lennox Lewis days and now through the Scott Harrison days. And you know when Frank's worried, that is a Frank Maloney who knows his man's a winner. They're going to be collating the scores and in a moment or two, the verdict will be announced by our master of ceremonies, Michael Pass. These are always anxious moments. Some of the crowds some of the crowd making their way out of the auditorium in the banked seats around here, 6,000 or so of them. They believe that Scott Harrison has done enough and they're trying to beat the crush of traffic which will be leaving this arena in a few minutes' time. And I think Frank Warren there, the promoter, will be now planning for the next defence, which is likely to be against the man from the Dominican Republic, the man they call the baby Mike Tyson, Joanne Guzman, who's a very talented young fighter, former WBC super bantamweight champion. He's heading for a fight against Scott Harrison at featherweight, and we, in a moment, I think, can get the decision. We're just trying to see if the master of ceremonies is ready. I believe he is, and so let's find out how this fight has ended. Ladies and gentlemen, these are the score tassels. Judge Manuel Palomo and Judge Roy Francis are both in agreement, 116 points to 111. And Judge André van Grutenboer scores the contest 117 to 111. The winner by unanimous decision and still... He's got it. Featherweight champion of the world from Canada's land in Scotland, Scott, the real McCoy.